Welcome to my channel, American Canadian Time. Subscribe to my channel for news updates all around the world. Canada's plan to modernize its air force is unraveling. The country committed to buying 88 F-35 fighter jets from Lockheed Martin to replace its aging CF-18s, but a recent Auditor General's report revealed the lifetime cost of the F-35s has soared by 40% since 20,000 Nanber O and Denver Sapper in Stanber Cent 42 from 19 to nearly 28 billion dollars. This massive overrun has forced the government to pause, having only finalized the first 16 jets. Meanwhile, political tensions with the US have escalated, making the F-35 deal even riskier. Relying on a single American supplier now feels less like a partnership and more like a dangerous dependency. Military analysts like Ken Hansen argue the F-35 is ill-suited for Canada's vast northern territories and harsh climate. The dream of a modern air force is turning into a logistical and financial nightmare. Canada needs new jets for NORAD and NATO, but the F-35 path is becoming unsustainable. The government is caught between high costs and the pressure to maintain defense ties with the US. This dilemma has opened the door for alternatives. The uncertainty around the F-35 has created an opportunity for a rival to step in. The stage was set for a dramatic shift in the global fighter jet market. As the F-35 deal faltered, Sweden's Saab seized the moment, promoting its JS-39 Gripen as a superior alternative. Saab's proposal went beyond just selling jets, it promised deep industrial cooperation, including technology transfer and final assembly in Canada. This could create up to 10,000 high-tech jobs, a stark contrast to the F-35's limited industrial benefits. Saab even negotiated with Bombardier to manufacture Gripens in Canada, including for a major Ukrainian order. A site in Nova Scotia was identified for final assembly, making the promise of jobs tangible. The seriousness of the offer was underscored by a planned visit from Sweden's King and Queen and Saab's CEO. Sweden's commitment made the Gripen a real contender, offering Canada not just a capable jet, but economic and industrial independence. It was a bold move that challenged the troubled F-35 program. Despite its appeal, the Gripen had a critical flaw, its American-made General Electric engine. This meant every sale was subject to U.S. export controls, giving Washington veto power over Gripen exports. The U.S. had already blocked deals, like a promising sale to Colombia. For countries seeking independence from American influence, this was a deal-breaker. For Canada, hoping to escape U.S. political entanglements, a Gripen with an American engine was hardly an improvement. If relations soured, the U.S. could cut off spare parts, grounding the fleet. This single point of failure made the Gripen less attractive for those wanting true autonomy. Saab and its partners knew they needed a non-American engine to compete globally. The challenge, find a European engine matching the GE's performance without redesigning the jet. Solving this was key to making the Gripen a genuine alternative. The search for a new power plant became urgent. Only by severing this American link could Saab unlock the Gripen's full potential. The answer would come from across the Atlantic. The solution came from the UK. Rolls-Royce offered to adapt a modern jet engine for the Gripen, replacing the American core. This freed the Gripen from US export controls, allowing Saab to sell to any country without Washington's approval. For Canada, this was huge. Rolls-Royce already had a major facility near Montreal promising local jobs and economic benefits. Maintenance and overhaul could be done in Canada, supporting the government's goal of strengthening its industrial base. The Gripen was transformed into a truly international platform, with deep Canadian involvement. This move signaled a broader push for European defense autonomy. By removing US parts, Saab and Rolls-Royce challenged American dominance. Integrating a new engine was complex, but Rolls-Royce's expertise made it possible. The result, a de-Americanized Gripen, ready for the world stage. For Canada, it offered a state-of-the-art jet, domestic jobs, and a decisive break from US reliance. The Gripen was now a near-perfect fit. The Gripen's operational strengths make it ideal for Canada. Its lifetime cost is just over half that of the F-35, freeing up billions for other priorities. The Gripen E's range, 1,500 kilometers, outclasses the F-35A, crucial for patrolling Canada's vast Arctic. It was designed for rapid maintenance by small crews, even in harsh conditions, 
The engine can be swapped in 40 minutes, refueling and rearming take under 10. It can operate from short, improvised runways, perfect for remote northern bases. The Gripen is fully compatible with Canada's existing hose and drogue refueling system, unlike the F-35. Choosing the F-35 would force Canada to replace or modify its tanker fleet at great cost. The Gripen fits seamlessly into Canada's infrastructure, saving time and money. Its ruggedness, range, and low operating costs are tailor-made for Canadian needs. The case for the Gripen is as practical as it is political. If Canada ditches the F-35 for the Gripen, it would send shockwaves through NATO and the global defense industry. For the US, it's more than a lost sale, it's a blow to its influence and the F-35 status as the alliance standard. Canada's move would challenge the push for NATO standardization, signaling that sovereignty and industrial benefits can outweigh US pressure. This would embolden other allies to consider non-American options. A Canadian Gripen, powered by Rolls-Royce, and built with Canadian industry, would be a landmark win for Europe, it would prove European companies can compete with US giants, shifting the balance in the transatlantic defense market. The real shock isn't the Gripen's capabilities. It jokes a re, it joker bun, chosen shoots, chosen stones or dan chotter. It's the geopolitical shift it represents. The era of automatic American dominance in Western defense contracts may be ending. Canada's potential deal comes as the Gripen gains global momentum. Ukraine's order for up to 150 Gripens, ideal for war conditions, has boosted Saab's credibility. The Gripen's combat performance was proven in Thai border skirmishes and the Philippines is now set to buy at least 20. Brazil manufactures Gripens under license, opening the door for more South American sales. Even countries once wary of U.S. influence like Peru and Colombia are reconsidering. Sweden itself has placed a major new order and Portugal and Oman have expressed interest. Each new sale builds the Gripen's reputation, making it a mainstream choice for air forces seeking flexibility and independence. The aircraft is no longer a niche alternative. It's a global contender. For Canada, joining this expanding family of users makes the Gripen a safer bet. The Gripen's rise is reshaping the fighter jet market. The Gripen selection would spark debate in Canada. Its strength is as a cost-effective, agile air defense fighter, perfect for defending Canadian airspace, but it's not a stealth bomber like the F-35, lacking deep penetration capabilities. Critics argue Canada would lose first day of war, stealth, while supporters say the Gripen's range and ruggedness better suit Canada's needs. Another debate, the single-engine design. Proponents cite reliability and lower costs. Critics worry about safety over remote terrain. Ultimately, the choice is about priorities. Defend Canadian sovereignty cost-effectively or join high-intensity coalition wars with stealth. The Gripen's strengths, range, cost, and maintainability align with Canada's unique requirements. The F-35 offers stealth, but at a much higher price. Canada faces a defining decision for its Air Force's future. The Saab Rolls-Royce collaboration has changed the global fighter jet landscape. If Canada chooses the Gripen, it signals that national interests and industrial benefits can outweigh U.S. pressure. This would embolden other countries to consider European alternatives. The Gripen success would validate the model of offering not just jets, but industrial partnerships and technology transfer. Future competitions may focus more on jobs and sovereignty than just specs. The rise of a de-Americanized Gripen marks a new era for the European defense industry. It could spur more pan-European projects and shift the transatlantic balance of power. The story is about more than jets, it's about a changing world order. The old rules are being rewritten with new priorities of value, capability, and independence. The shockwave from Canada's decision could reshape alliances and defense markets for decades.